What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm reacting to David Allen outlining his ideal app for getting things done. It's an excerpt from a talk he gave at a seminar, which was recorded and published on YouTube as well. So I'll link the original video in the description. Interesting to me because I've been practicing the GTD method for many years now. And on this channel, I've got dozens upon dozens of tutorials outlining how you can use all kinds of apps for the GTD method. David Allen, creator of the method, has been critical of many of these apps in some interviews that I've seen. I believe he even follows a primarily paper-based method. So I'm very curious to see how he actually sees this. How does he view an app for GTD? This is a fictional sketch, if I recall correctly. I haven't seen the presentation. I have seen the sketches before. But the David Allen company hasn't ever released a GTD app of their own. There are a few ones that have been built for GTD, like Nirvana or Facile Things, both of which I've reviewed on my channel as well. But I'm curious to see how David Allen views all this. Let's dive into the video and see what he has to say. I had a topic called the GTD app, right? I actually created the ultimate GTD app. I have it. <laughs> I think he's being a bit cheeky here. I've seen him act this way in a few interviews as well. Look at his face. I don't think he's 100% serious here, obviously. We know that he hasn't released an actual GTD app as of yet. Willing to give it to you, by the way. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> because, you know, in the newsletter soon, if you get our GTD newsletter, hopefully you all do, I'll give you a link to this. Uh, <clears throat> there's the homepage. <clears throat> That's what I want to see when I hit F1. Right? I want to see what's got to happen today, what I need to know about today. What needs to happen specifically on the time today and i need to see what just happened sometime today. this is interesting this sketch on the left top hand side we can see the inbox we see different buttons for projects next actions waiting for calendar and so on and so forth which is something i've seen very few apps implement it by in their default design i remember Amazing Marvin has something like this in their pre-built GTD setup. However, that also has some flaws. So I used that and improved upon it. And I have a video on that as well. What I really like about this initial sketch is how the calendar is shown. Instead of only this classical view with time boxes, it shows today's date, which happens to be Sunday, April 10th in this presentation, I guess, in the front view. But just like in a physical tickler file, there are these days that follow after Sunday that you may be able to scroll through in his design here. And of course, the focus on next actions on the left hand side. Now, in his case, that seems to be this kind of block approach as well. Calls, other errands, etc. as example contexts. Personally, I think filters can perform this role just fine. So there's actually a more focused view to next actions than what he's proposing here. But I haven't even given him the chance to speak to it in detail. So let's continue the video. Today for sure. I need to have all the rest of it at my fingertips so I can see longer or shorter on the process. I need to see then the other stuff I need to do in and around what's on my calendar and quickly be able to see a map of all the projects I have. Mm -hmm. I also, by the way, want to see and want to have the ability to be able to hit a note anywhere on my computer and a post-it shows up and it drops into an end basket and also the size of that end basket will change color as it grows and it will be on the corner of my screen all the time. <laughs> There's a few apps that actually allow you to do this. TickTick -tick comes to mind primarily because they have a desktop widget and several hotkeys to easily do exactly what David Allen just mentioned, to capture new thoughts, new inputs. And for mobile, this is even more accessible. Todoist, for example, has a fantastic widget that you can just put on your home screen, press plus, enter inputs in various different ways. Right? Uh, <clears throat> gonna let me know how many projects I have that don't have next actions on them, and any previous things I thought I was supposed to do on a day that went forward and didn't get done. I need to see that, that F1, that's what I- Yeah, basically an overdue list. So if items have a due date associated with a time that's before now you'll want to see that and it's kind of nudging you 
to think about it. I agree. And that's what many apps allow you to do as well. I want to see when I hit F1. Now, by the way, each one of those things, each one of those boxes, you could click on any one of those and they will take you to other, uh, other things. Just if you're processing your in basket, that should look a little familiar to you folks. It's going to do that. But as you're doing going through that, each one of those things, when you click, will take you to that area so that you can then manage that appropriately and, uh, and you know, the right way. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think this is already the next screen, so I'll scroll back a little bit. Because here it talks about the processing workflow of GTD. Anything that's captured is just stuff until you've defined what it is. And you can see that that's one of the first questions. Is this actionable? Yes or no? If no, do I need to discard it? Is it something to put on the back burner for someday maybe? Or is it reference or support material? In other words, it's not actionable but it may help you in an active project in one way or another. And if yes, you go through these different steps to finally arrive at next actions perhaps, or communications in his case, activate, incubate, or eliminate. I like those three words. Those are basically your three choices with capturing. It is something that some apps have built in quite natively. And I mentioned Nirvana and Facile Things before. I think they're one of the best at this because they are built for GCD. So obviously they're going to have this and they may have watched this talk as well and included that in how they built the app. For other apps I used to do is, for example, this process happens more in the head, but it is possible to execute on it. In my way of working with it, I use tags or labels as they're called in other softwares as well to distinguish what is something. You can have labels for different kinds of contexts, for time estimates, even an energy required if it's all actionable, but you can also have different lists inside various kinds of software to distinguish between actionable, non-actionable, reference, support material, etc. Folks, it's gonna do that, but as you're doing going through that, each one of those things when you click will take you to that area so that you can then manage that appropriately and, and you know, the right way. Uh, if you have a project, that project page should be processed there you should have the ability to manage as much of that detail on that project as possible if you want to get to take a look at that project. By the way, if you identify something as a project, this will also uh, instantly give you whatever you program as the time you want to have for your project brainstorming software to come to, come to screen. I, it, to me, we have Mind Manager for two minutes. If I wanted to extend that, I could extend it. If not, then it goes on to something else. But it asks me, is there a next action on this, David, before you leave your brainstorming? Mm. Right? That's a good one. So to have this tool support your way of thinking about projects in that you first want to clearly lay out what is the desired outcome here. Now, I'm not even that good at mind mapping and all this stuff. I tend to get better at it this year and there's some software out there that serves this purpose. But it's definitely a good key question to ask yourself when you're setting up a project what is the next action? Does this project even have one yet? Send me an alert if it doesn't. And I think this is something that should be included in more tools as a default setup, even if it's not for GTD. If you have a list or if you have a project and it contains no items inside of it, no tasks to complete, whilst the project isn't marked complete on its own, there is a disconnect there. So I would love to see more tools implementing this automatic alert in the future that just says, hey, Lucas, this project, you just marked an item complete from your next actions list. That's where I work from as GTD, right? I don't go from project to project. I just go from context to context. So I may mark off a specific item, not knowing that doing so leaves a project empty. And I want to receive an alert that lets me know, hey, you need to think about the next step for this project. There's an empty space between the achieved outcome and what's to be done. By the way, if you identify something as a project, this will also uh, instantly give you whatever you program as the time you want to have for your project brainstorming software to come to, come to screen. I, it, to me, we have Mind Manager for two minutes. If I wanted to extend that, I could extend it. If not, then it goes on to something else. But it asked me, is there a next action on this, David, before you leave your brainstorming? That's just three of 19 uh, screens that I drew in uh, 1994. <laughs>
Wow. I mean, I already saw that being circled in the previous screen here in this presentation, but think about that right now. I'm speaking to this screen with the luxury of having dozens of apps at my disposal in 2022. So almost 30 years ago, David came up with a sketch like this that I think is way ahead of its time. And in some degrees, it still is very innovative. It's an opportunity for app builders, productivity app builders to jump into. Because I haven't seen something that truly resembles the GTD spirit as close as what David Allen here is describing. Now, granted, you can get very far. And I think my tutorials have shown that it doesn't really matter in the end which tool you use. You have to be comfortable with it, and that's most important. But a lot of the processes that GTD advocates, they still take place in your head. And that's okay. And especially over time, it's just autopilot. I, at least that's my experience. And I can perfectly well adjust to uh, tools limitations. But I'm very curious to see those other 16 screenshots now. This video is just four minutes long. We're already over half of it, so I don't think we'll get to see all of them. Let's see uh, what else we get to see here. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> now, right. Coda and Scoro and, you know, come on, all, all our folks and, and Ken and OmniFocus all have done elegant versions of, 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 of a lot of this, mm -hmm. but not the whole thing yep. yet. Right. We tried with two different teams with some of the best, brightest people in this world, and also 15 years of my friend Eric Mack, who designed what I'm still using, which is an overlay on IBM Notes now, which comes close to some of that, as hmm. close as we could get, right? An overlay on IBM Notes. I really wonder who is still using that, aside from David Allen. That's a software that nobody around me is mentioning, and I'm not seeing it mentioned anywhere, you know, active users. So that's interesting. I might have to try and get it myself and review it just for the fun of it. But it sounds pretty old. But why is it so difficult? I also wonder. You've got the brightest minds, he says. Try, what did he say? Let's have a look at uh, what he said. A lot of this, but not the whole thing yet. We tried with two different teams. Two different some of the teams. the best, brightest people in this world. And also 15 years of my friend Eric Mack, who mm. designed what I'm still using, which is an overlay on IBM Notes now, which comes close to some of that, as close as we could get right, with the technology. So talk to Eric if you want to see hear a lot of that history. Where it sounds to me like we need to merge some of the existing tools that are out there. Because what I found from reviewing dozens of different tools is some of them perform, like he just said, a portion of GTD excellently. So if you were to be able to connect those at the very least or even merge those, then you would have an ultimate setup. And honestly, I think I'm getting pretty close to it with my own setup, which I will discuss in a later video as well. My videos so far have been about using one tool to have the complete GTD experience within that tool, a very minimal approach in a way. But in the end, some tools are better at some things than others. So why not just use multiple ones together so that you can have an experience as close to what David Allen is outlining here. This Let's see what he has to say. The two times we did this in the mid 90s and then only about four or five years ago, it was Eric, um, Eric Anderson, his fabulous company, Intentional Software at that time. And neither one of them was able to get success for it for various reasons, not because of the lack of talent or the lack of a model to work on, but both technological issues, bi-directional issues, trying to build a, you know, something that would integrate all of this because it mm -hmm. has to have calendar, it has to calendar, have the ability to integrate all of the stuff that you're doing and see it on a dashboard mm -hmm. and be bi-directional. Yeah, true. That's Expensive tough. and hard to do technologically. Especially considering some of these portions are so built in to many people's workflows already. I mean, I'm one of them. Calendar is a big example. Everybody uses either Google Calendar or Microsoft Outlook. And if you want somebody to move away from that, that's a pretty big ask, especially if that specific calendar tool may be integrated with other tools that they're already using, right? So I can imagine how that is challenging. And perhaps it was the wrong approach to try and build one tool for everything. Perhaps the better approach is 
to have different tools and make them work together in the best way possible. Legally, the worst thing is the market didn't think it needed it. Come on, people still walking around with stuff in their heads. Why would they bother <laughs> buying something like that? So building a valuable... <laughs> that's, another, that's a whole other issue. That's true, though. That's true. I mean, GTD, like thinking, is still very much in the early adopter stage if we were to take this market adoption framework, which is a shame. Well, the valuable product, whatever you call that in the agile world, to begin with, start to do it, mm. never really got off the ground. So this is going to be available publicly, and if you want to run with it, have at it. <laughs> That's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. It sounds like he, no, he literally threw up his hands in the air there and kind of says, well, screw it. I gave it my best shots. I gave you the outline. I wrote the damn book. I created the methodology. Now it's up to you to do something with it. All in all, a really interesting video for me to see. I hadn't seen it before. Like I said, I only saw a few of the sketches, but I didn't realize they were this old for one. I didn't realize the efforts that had been made by David and some of those around him to create a GTD app. But from the sounds of it, this is still an open challenge. The framework is out there. The method, of course, is out there. And as I've also concluded from my thorough reviews of all these different kinds of tools is that as of yet, there isn't the perfect GTD app yet. So anybody watching this, take this as motivation. If you're able to build a tool like this, give it your best shots and let me know when you do, because this is what this channel is all about. It's reviewing interesting productivity tech that helps us perform our best. At the same time, I hope that David or others from the David Allen company will see some of my videos and become a bit more optimistic about the tremendous opportunities that existing technology does already provide. Granted, sometimes it requires some imagination, some reinterpreting of existing features in order to make things work. For example, Todoist for me works formidably well for GTD but you need to reinterpret the projects feature as the lists feature of which projects can be a part, but other lists like the Sunday maybe list as well. The functionality is there. The name is just a bit counterintuitive. And you see that with all these different kinds of tools in my experience. So if you are a GTD follower, take a look at my channel, look at the tutorial videos to find a tool that suits your needs. And if you're a developer or programmer, I would say check out David's video. The link is in the description and go and build it. Let me know when you've done so. I'll be happy to take a look at it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.